and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Sheep Cottage and I have a very special treat for you today. So I'm actually joined by another blogger and I'm gonna let her introduce herself in a minute and we're gonna do a special live premiere here on YouTube. So Corey, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey guys, I am Corey. My blog is Hey Let's Make Stuff and I mostly do cricket crafting and those sorts of things. So Angie and I, we've been friends for years and um, our blogs have a lot of overlap, but uh, we love it that way, so. Yes, absolutely. So if you love all things cricket, be sure to head to Corey's YouTube channel, and I will link that in the description. Follow her all the places. I'll link to her social too. Okay, so today we are going to make some Halloween bags, and this is a live premiere here on YouTube. So what does that mean? That means we pre-recorded this little video for you, just so that, you know, you don't have to listen to us stammer and stutter and, you know, maybe make huge mistakes, maybe a few small mistakes, but not huge ones. But that means that we can be in the chat section talking to you while this is playing live. So if you're catching this live, chat with us. The first thing we want to know is where you're from and where you're tuning in from. So head to the chat section and tell us. And if you're watching the replay, we'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. All right, so what are we making today? So first of all, this is the first of two live premieres that we're going to do. And Corey's going to tell you about the second one as well. So if you have your supplies, you can craft along with us today and make some Halloween tote bags. There's actually six designs. We're going to make a few of those live. And then um, you can make the rest later if you will choose to. Now, here are a few of the designs. And we're going to make a few more live today. And for those of you that got the bundle, you were able to get the tote bags and the HTV from Heat Transfer Warehouse. So hopefully you can craft along with us today, which is awesome. Or maybe you bought the SVG files and have your own supplies, that works too. Now, if you missed the bundle, you're like, what are you talking about, Angie? <laughs> you can join us on November 18th for another live premiere. And I'm gonna let Corey talk about that one. And that way you won't miss this one and you'll get your supplies in order for that. So go ahead, Corey. So we are gonna be making Christmas camping mugs over on my YouTube channel on November 18th. And for that, you can buy the bundle. It comes with 12 um, Christmas mug SVGs. They're really cute. Um, they're specifically designed to be put on mugs so they're kind of the right size and they're kind of muggy. There's one that says like hug in a mug. They're really cute. Um, and we're gonna be using these camping mugs. And I actually had somebody ask, these are sublimation mugs. So if you do wanna do, if you wanna sublimate on them, you can as well. Um, and then a whole range of different colors of vinyl that you can use for that, um, for that plus um, transfer tape, so you can leave that as well. But you can get this whole bundle um, and it's really cheap over at Heat Transfer Warehouse. Yep, and I will drop all the links for all that stuff if you're like, whoa, that's a lot of links. I'll drop them <laughs> all in the description below. Um, so if you are watching this on computer, you should see like a show more to open up the description. If you're watching it on mobile, one of two things, try swiping up or a lot of times there's three dots and you kind of expand the description or an arrow, something like that. So look for one of those options to expand that description if you can't find it. And as always, you can comment and I'll drop you links. Okay, so now it's time to make tote bags. So if you bought our bundle, you have the SVG files, Open up Cricut Design Space right now. Let's start uploading those to Cricut Design Space. So hopefully you have those on your computer or whatever. And we are going to make a tote bag, two tote bags actually, at least, start to finish. So we're just gonna go ahead and start uploading our designs to Cricut Design Space. And Corey, you wanna upload one and um, then we'll both start cutting. Yes, that sounds good. Okay, so let me make sure that you guys can see my screen here. Hold on just a second. Okay, so I have uploaded the witch legs because I'm kind of obsessed with this cute little file that you made, Angie. Um, but I want to know what size to put, you know, to make it. So I have um, a tape measure. I don't have a tape measure. Let me go grab it. <laughs> While you're grabbing your tape measure, um, I always give people the hint that I like a sewing tape measure because it's flexible rather than a ruler when I'm measuring this kind of stuff. Um, and look, Corey does too. I get the tip <laughs> from both of us and we didn't even plan that. <laughs> I mean, I literally probably have an actual ruler around here, but I prefer this for- Yes, because it's like flexible and you can make sure it's the right size. So I always recommend that to people. 
my boys like to steal, I have six year old boys and they love to steal these tape measures. So it's like my eighth tiny tape measure. But I just are kind of obsessed with them. All right. So it looks like on these bags, the print area, the largest you'd want to go is 12 by 12, but obviously I don't want to go that big. Is that kind of what you're seeing on your bag? Yes. And um, if you bought the bundle, these bags have this like seam at the top and I would recommend avoiding that seam. Yeah, there's also kind of this seam down the side as well here. Yeah. So I'm kind these of- These are like such high things. quality bags. <laughs> they are, they're so nice. And now I want more to do for like <laughs> other <laughs> events and things. <laughs> I feel like that canvas is really heavy and nice. All right, so I think I'm going to make my witch legs, I don't know, 10 inches tall. What are you thinking for your, are you making, what are you making? Yes, I'm gonna make the ghost. The ghost, okay. Yeah. So you can go over here and you can change your height to, you know, whatever you wanna put on your bag. I mean, you could cut this really small. You could cut it smaller and then put a name on it. We may take some time and show you how to also personalize these, um, at the end of this uh, video. All right, so once you have your file, the size that you want it, you can go ahead and click make it. There's really not much you need to do. If you wanna use different colors, you can change the colors in Cricut Design Space, um, but that's not necessary if you don't, if you don't want. So I would also which say like the ghost has two pieces. Make sure like you pick those, all of those pieces and click attach just in case they are attached together when you import it. Cause Design Space is weird. Yeah, Design Space is grumpy sometimes. <laughs> So which machine are you using today, Angie? Okay, I'm gonna use my Cricut Explorer Air 2 because it was handy. It's good. <laughs> I'm over here, I've got my handy dandy, oh my gosh, I don't think I can get it on the screen. But it's my Cricut Explorer Air 3. Um, so if you have one of the newer machines, you're gonna see a, um, a pop-up on your um, Cricut Design Space that asks how you're gonna load your project. Um, you can load it without a mat if you've decided to use Cricut Smart Materials like Cricut Smart Iron On. Um, you can load it on the mat or you can load it multiple ways, which is using both. Um, since we're using the HTD from Heat Transfer Warehouse, I'm gonna load it on a mat. Um, and if you have an older version of your Cricut that's not the three series, you will not see this little window. All right, everything okay, is on. I wanna say, um, oh, yeah. you can use any Cricut machine with this project, except the joy is probably too small for most of the designs that we chose for the bags. Now, if you're going to join us for the mugs and you have a joy, join right. away because <laughs> they are perfect for the joy. <laughs> if you want to put these cute Halloween designs on a mug, we could use the joy. <laughs> yes, you could just size them down. <laughs> yes. All right, so because this is heat transfer vinyl, we want to mirror our images, um, especially it doesn't really matter for the witch as much because it's the same image back and forth. But if you have something like the ghost that says boo, the last thing you want is your ghost bag to say woob. All right, that's not cool. <laughs> All right, so then we'll connect to your machine. All right, well, all that happens. Angie, I want you to tell me what's the favorite Halloween costume that you've ever made? Um, so I really go all out for, for making my kids Halloween costumes. I did when they were little. Um, mm -hmm. I've made a ton, but I did make, I made Glenda the Good Witch one year. Wow. Uh, took me months, but it looked really, really good. So that, that is definitely one of the favorite ones I've ever made. That's awesome. So what I about more you? But your boys are still young, so. Yeah. So this will be the third year that we have made um, Halloween costumes using um, the primary hoodies, so just the plain hoodies. And then I get um, felt and I cut it either on my Cricut or just by hand and glue it to different, or so actually I've been using a basting stitch. So then I can pull it out and then we have hoodies for the rest of the season. So they were- a good a, idea. Yeah, so they were a dog and a cat a couple of years ago and then they were two foxes. And this year they're dressing as their, um, their favorite stuffed animals. So I have to somehow turn a hoodie into a giraffe and an alligator. <laughs> so, Jack and Captain Crunch are the name of these, name of these animals. <sighs> okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to show everyone how to put um, the stuff on the mat. Oh, that? perfect. Okay. Okay. So um, since we're using HTV, I just wanted to show you that this shiny side should go down on the mat. And then the other thing I always like to do on this um, 
this HC from Heat Transfer Warehouse. They always mark it with the type and the color. If you're gonna cut in that area, I always remove the sticker just so it's not on there and messes my cut up. So I did wanna point that out too. Um, otherwise- I love that sticker. Yeah, so I love the sticker. If I don't have to use that area, I leave the sticker on. I take it off last yes. because I'm making the ghost and it's going to be like almost the entire sheet of HTV. I'm going to go ahead and take my sticker off my white sheet. <laughs> okay, so I've got Cricut Design Space open here. I've set my base material to everyday iron on because I think that'll work. Um, pressure set to default. And now it's saying to load tools and materials. So now hopefully everyone's ready to cut. If you want to tell us in the comment section which bag you're making today, if you are crafting along with us, we would love to hear from you. And it's probably going to get loud, but maybe we can both cut at the same time. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Go. Go ahead. <laughs> I did. This can also be a test between the speed of the, <laughs> the new <laughs> explorer. <laughs> Mine will be the slower one. <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> Even though this is not like the cutting speed on the new machine is supposed to be faster only with smart materials, the carriage itself just moves faster in between cuts. So it does. It, is, it like it zooms between the cuts. Oh, Angie. I cut it backwards. I made a critical error. <laughs> I didn't cut it back on the first, um, on the first uh, mat. So now oh. I've got green witch shoes, which is fine. I'll have green witch shoes and purple witch pants. There you go. Gosh. You changed the colors. You shouldn't even tell anybody. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Never mind. Nothing to see here. <laughs> My boys learned. They watch I did this on and, purpose. I like the I like this opposite. This is what purple tights. So my boys watch this YouTuber named Mark Rober. I don't know if you follow him on YouTube. He's like a sciencey guy, but um, he used to work at NASA, and he says things like, "Oh, that was a critical oversight." And now my boys who are six say things like, "Oh, that was a critical oversight." So <laughs> we'll just call this a critical oversight. <laughs> okay. Oh, I should have cut my second one because you only have one layer, huh? Yes, I only have one layer, so you cut the second one. And since I heard your easy press taping up, I'm gonna swap my um, explore here for my easy press really quickly. <laughs> for my beeping. Yes, and so if this is HTV, so you could use an easy press, an iron, a heat press. Like it, I, I think we're gonna both gonna use an easy press, and I find that easier to use on camera like this. Um, but definitely, whatever you have to press, this is gonna work fine. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. What are you using to press? Because there's like, I don't know, six or seven options, I swear. Oops. Yeah. So I'm going to use my like nine by nine here. I'm using my little six by nine or six by six or whatever. Yeah, size that one is my favorite. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> I actually thought about using my mini because I use that thing for everything, but this was over here. So that's what I'm going with. And do you have any idea what the time and temperature is? Because I didn't look. Um, I know that for just iron on, everyday iron on, it's 315 for 30 seconds. I think this is a little less. Let's look. Since mine has to heat up anyway, we're going to look so I can tell you the official time and temperature. And then as soon as you're done cutting your second layer, we can start weeding, I guess, huh? Sounds good to me. I'm going to trim off what I've got here. I'll grab one of my million pairs of scissors from back here. So heat. So what I always recommend is you look up the time and temperature for like the specific brand you're using. Um, so I'm going to look up on Heat Transfer Warehouse's website, Caesar Easy Weed. So that's what I'm doing just so um, I get like exactly what they recommend. I have to tell everybody my secret and that's that I'm sitting on a pillow. 
<laughs> Such a high desk. <laughs> I feel like a child. <clears throat> okay, it is. 305, 10 to 15 seconds. Oh, that's fast. Nice. It's I mean, really fast. Reset my easy and press. It will, um, I know you're doing two layers. You can press that first layer even less time, like five seconds, and it'll usually peel off. And you can peel it hot too, which is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I may, I may actually press these at the same time because they don't actually overlap. Oh, yeah. We can talk about how to do that. Yeah. All right. So when you weed your iron on, do you prefer to weed it on the mat or off the mat? I'm generally on the mat. You? Um, generally on the mat, but because I cut it out, so I had small oh. pieces, I took them off. All right. Here, I'll switch angles real quick. Okay. So any weeding tips and tricks? Um, I think one of the biggest ones that I think, which doesn't happen until the end, I always hold up whatever I've weeded, whether it's iron on or adhesive vinyl, I got to hold it up to the light because I am just notorious for forgetting to weed the inside of letters <laughs> or little pieces that are yeah. missing. <laughs> Number of times I've ironed on the center of an A. It's embarrassing. <laughs> What about you? I always miss, um, you know, cursive when there's an R and there's that little bitty yeah. loop at the top of the R. I miss it every single every time. time. Every time. This weeds really nicely. Yes. That's why it's so the Caesar is right. really nice if you haven't used it. <laughs> it's like my favorite. <laughs> yeah. All right, so mine didn't have a ton of weeding. I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done. Hold on, I just got the inside of her. Which tights, which pants, which legs? Do you like the regular weeding tool or the hooked weeding tool? Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. Am I back? No, I'm not back. I, I can hear you. Get back. I can hear you. There we go. I'm back now. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I like the hook, like with the two bends on it. Oh, really? I don't like that one. How funny. This is, it's like my absolute favorite. This is the one I always reach for. See, this I don't like that one. How funny. That's I always like say like weeding tools is like everyone's like own thing. <laughs> it's like you could probably do some sort of like personality, Enneagram, Myers Briggs, like test for yeah and then those for. people some people and so tell us in the comment section what which weeding tool you prefer because some people even like those pins you know where it just yes. clicks and comes out and i cannot I those get those to work it. at all i hate <laughs> it, it. Works. i've got one right back here and i'm like nope nope nope, nope. just give me my dental pick <laughs> yes <coughs> pardon me Let's see. water yeah that's me too <laughs> I'm telling you, I choked on my soup last night and I'm like, <laughs> too much talking. <laughs> I like my witch's green shoes. All right, so we've got these press. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and lint roll my bag because it's been sitting here for a while and <laughs> it's messy. There's oh. mine ready to go. I should show you. Um, I did, so on these bags, I don't know if you noticed, but there's like a zipper pouch in the back. I found it easier to press on the side that didn't have the zipper pouch. Um, yeah. Oh, I just realized just, too, I forgot my easy press mat. I'll be right back. Oh yeah. Just so everybody knows that way, um, you don't have that hump to press on with the pouch back there and the zipper. I just found it kind of, I don't know, awkward. And then I used my easy press mat on the inside of the bag. Just and putting mine in the bag. <laughs> yeah. That way you don't get like that zipper. 
And then the liner, I like had to fiddle with it forever to get it to lay flat. Okay. This is the fiddling portion of. Yes. <laughs> well, mine's not too bad. So really? the other day, um, I was playing around with some clear HTV, um, doing some experiments, and I didn't lint roll at least enough. I thought I lint rolled. You could see all that lint through that HTV. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so tip. <laughs> Hot tips. Yeah, this is not good. Not a good we lost, look. <laughs> we lost our dog, you know, like last December. So it's almost been a year. And yet his hair is still all over my stuff. Like I just that, I mean, he was a Bernie's mountain dog. So there's like some sort of scientific attraction of hair to things. <laughs> but I just can't believe that I'm still like this many months later such a mess okay so you can do this you can if you have more than one layer you can press them in two different ways and, and this will work better for some of the designs than others um, but for mine instead of pressing them in two presses I'm gonna just cut really close to the bottom here and really close to the top on the legs and put them together just so that I can press them all in one go there just doesn't seem since they're not really touching um, that's my favorite but, way to layer you don't have to worry about like one shrinking and it not right. fitting together right. And I'm just kind of preheating the bag. The HTV is still over here. Yeah. I will do the same here and just trying to make sure it was flat and all those like wrinkles were out of the liner on the inside, which it looks like I got it pretty good. That's good. <laughs> My fingerprints are all over this HTV. I'm not going to commit any crimes today. <laughs> Do you know what one of my favorite things I did in my new craft studio is? I put trash cans everywhere. I've got like six trash cans in here. It's like the best move I could have ever made. I probably need additional trash cans. <laughs> I just was like, you know, I was so tired of walking across the room and throw something away. I was like, what am I doing in here? So since we're making trick-or-treat bags, what's your favorite Halloween candy? I can't eat them anymore. I know, but what used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Reese's. I love Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, miss them I don't so talk much. about it. I don't talk about it a ton on YouTube, but um, I like have all kinds of dietary restrictions, and Corey is my one friend that also has all sorts of dietary restrictions. So we can't even eat Halloween candy, but we will enjoy these trick or treat bags anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it was combined with broccoli. <laughs> yes, I'll have. Broccoli with salt and pepper. That's what I'll have. <laughs> oh, so that is, it's just trick. There's no treat here. <laughs> it's just trick. <laughs> I'm glad we can uh, be together on this, though. <laughs> we can laugh about it. But you all, you all can put your favorite Halloween candy in the comment section, and we'll just, like, you know, drool over that. Now, one thing I can't get behind is candy corn. I do not I like it at all. Never I do have. like it. Do not miss it at all. <laughs> I do love it. I oh, love it. Ugh. it's like wax. <laughs> it is like wax, but it's delicious candy corn wax. Oh, no. All right. I'm getting ready to press. Yes. Do you have any tips and tricks for like aligning it on the bag? Um, eyeball it. That's my tip and trick. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, you can use your handy dandy ruler. This is a good one. Yeah, I was looking for my tape measure and I apparently misplaced that. So I'm going to use a ruler. Yep. I mean, looking at mine, I've eyeballed it pretty well. Good job. A lot so. of times I use like my fingers, like nice. three fingers on one side, three fingers on the other. Is it centered? I, so I do that a lot. That's a good idea. I feel like I am just fairly good at eyeballing things, so I haven't myself had to come up with a lot of tricks for it. Yeah. Um, but that's a good one. All right, so I think we're ready to press. Let's do it. All right. Go in 10 seconds, or are you going? Um, I'm going to do 15. OK. Well, you know what? I'm going to do 10, because this design I'm using my nine by nine and this design is so big, I'm gonna have to press it four times anyway and the center's gonna get hot. Okay. 
I'm gonna do like 10. I'm gonna do 10 as well, because I have to press mine in several presses too, because I use a little one. So I am only pressing for 10 seconds, but I'm gonna press for 10, move it, press for 10, <laughs> move it. So it's gonna take yeah. me a little bit. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> what was the favorite Halloween costume that you ever wore? I mean, I always wore those ones with the, you know, 80s and the plastic mask, like Wonder Woman or whatever. Yep. But I can't remember my mom making it. It was just the plastic mask ones. Did your mom make anything? Yeah, my mom was at, my mom taught me to sew. Um, she's super crafty. She's got an Etsy shop. You know, she's right. She could be our friend here. Um, <laughs> but she Well, as soon as I had my first child, my mom made my um, oldest daughter's like first three Halloween costumes and sewed them. So she could do it. <laughs> yeah, my mom, when I was young, probably five or six, made, maybe probably six, like maybe a She-Ra costume, like from her She-Ra, Princess of Power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I had one of those costumes. Um, I love She-Ra. Oh my gosh, this peels so nice. 10 seconds is fine. Ooh. Like it's peeling great. Mine, I have a little area that I'm going to need to press again. It's right in the center of the easy press yeah. mat. Sometimes I find it does a little, it's a little goofy there. So mine is done already. There we go. I, oop, mine's still really hot. It's cool. <laughs> I don't need fingerprints. Then I could admit those crimes I was talking about earlier. And then this one, the Caesar, you don't have to press from the back or anything. Like it's good to go. 10 seconds, you're done. Nice. So if you're used to using Cricut um, iron on, it's a little bit different, a little bit easier. So I've got a tip for anybody who lives in the Pacific Northwest. This is such a weird tip. Um, there's a company up here called Ridwell. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a recycling company and it's in Portland and Seattle and surrounding areas. And I think it's also in Denver now, but they take this kind of flexible plastic and recycle it. So I feel like so much of my Cricut waste, I can now recycle, which makes me super happy. <laughs> it's That's awesome. Away. I know you I've said that and I looked to see if they were anywhere around Tennessee. They are not. <laughs> they started up here and I'm like, oh, go everywhere. It's such a cool company. And it's like, you have to pay for it, but it's like $12 a month or something. It's so cheap. So I'm like, yes, please take my mountains of plastic. It just makes me feel like the waste yes. is not quite as icky. All right, mine's done. All right, so there's my little trick or treat bag. Hey, and let us know in the comment section if you made one with us and if you got finished, we would love to hear from you. So I we have time. Do you want to like add a name to one? Yeah, I think so. Let's do it. Okay, should we maybe add a name to the back of this? Or we could add, I might add a little witch quote. I'm going to see if there's something in design space really fast that I could add. There you go. And I'll, I'll do the name and that way mm -hmm. we'll have two different things. Perfect. All right. So I am going to I'm just going to start a new project in design space, click text and find a font I like um, and just use that. And I I think I'll do this for my grandson, so I'm just going to use his name. Cute. Ooh, I found one that says Witch and Famous. I'm going to go with that one. Oh, that'd be cute. <laughs> okay, and again, I'm going to measure this. Found my tape measure. Never mind that image. I mean, in funny. Let's see. You know, the best way to find a lost crafting tool is to buy another one, right? <laughs> That's the only way to find a lost crafting tool. <laughs> Somebody had asked me recently why I have so many scrapers. And that's the exact, I mean, I truly do. I've got four or five yeah. back here. It's always because I've lost them. I can't uh, find yeah. <laughs> Well, 
All right, I'm just gonna choose this one that says which because I like it kind of, I feel like it kind of fits the design that you made. And then, yes, let's measure. Are you using your um, iPad for the? I am, and I um, accidentally hit something and deleted the name that I typed. So uh, let me find that one again. <laughs> good job, good job. It never goes easy when you're doing a video, right? That's just the <laughs> nature of the game. I'm just gonna start all over and hit, hit new projects. This is how bad, because I just. <laughs> I'm already, I'm over here cutting. Okay. I mean, I've had a cricket now for seven or eight years, and I still am just shocked at how quickly I can make projects. I'm like, oh, I need to make this for, you know, whatever event at school for the boys, and then boom, I have a costume. So, do you use the, the images and design space a lot? I know I do, and I have an access subscription, but I know a lot of people don't. So, That's I would true, love yeah. to hear if you, do you use them a lot? Me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like in the last year, especially, they've gotten a lot of really great designs. And obviously, you know, I sell designs. Yeah, I sell designs too. But a lot of times I'm like, well, why would I make my own when this one will do? Yeah. <laughs> so. No, I, d I like totally agree. I do have one trick too. If you're, um, if you're using an older mat um, and you're having trouble getting your iron on the stick, um, I always use my brayer. Like this is one of my favorite tools in my craft room. Yes. And like no one uses that and it's like a lifesaver from your mat life. Yeah. You can use mats so much longer. So what color are you doing your, um, I'm doing purple and I'm using the word witch. I think I might do orange. And this is a really good orange, actually. It is um, a good orange. I find that, or yeah, orange is horrible on HTV, vinyl, like, just. I feel like orange and green are like <laughs> two hard ones to really yeah. nail. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, more water. Okay, I have to switch back to my forget. Okay. And you craft in such a tiny space. I'm always impressed by what you get done in your, you. <laughs> in your tiny space. It is not very big, but that goes to show everybody that you can craft in a small area. <laughs> yes, I used to have a, a very small day. area, but now I have a much bigger area. It's much easier. Yeah, but I'm constantly switching things like in and out, in and out, in and out. Even just having, like when I'm crafting here, even just having this shelf back here is super helpful for, you know, putting extra things. I think that the new Cricut is also quieter than the old Cricut. Oh, it's definitely quieter. Hey, have you ever done um, a tour of your new space? I have not yet, but I will be doing one soon because I have a friend coming to take Good. some photos and do everything. So everyone follow Corey so you can see her smooth place because it is amazing. <laughs> it's like a dream come true. I still can't believe that it's my house. <laughs> so amazing. And we actually bought the house that we live in here in Washington from another blogger's parents. Um, my friend Crystal, who Angie knows as well, from Hello Creative Family. This is her childhood home. <laughs> so... Um, she found out we were looking at moving to this area and her parents were looking to sell. So now we live here. And I almost hit go without mirroring. So I'm going back to mirror. Critical oversight. I did manage to mirror mine. <clears throat> All right. And and I made my name about like eight inches yep. wide. I just, that's pretty good. I think I made which nine inches wide. Like people ask all the time, like how big should I make stuff for shirts? And I'm like, I just measure it. <laughs> I was like, what looks good? Especially because every shirt yeah. is different, 
right? Like if I go to the store and I buy a medium shirt, it could be one of 10 different actual sizes. I have to go get my charger. I have to go get my charger for my computer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, while she's doing that, tell me what you guys are all dressing up for as Halloween. I am not dressing up this year. We actually, our neighborhood is not particularly great for trick or treating because we live on the side of a mountain. And there's just nobody that's hiking up my 52 stairs to my front door to get a mini Snickers. So we'll do like a trunk or treat in the neighborhood, but um, I don't think we'll be doing any trick or treating, regular trick or treating here this year. But I would love to hear what you all are doing for Halloween and what you're dressing as in the comments. Okay. Ooh. I do feel like I should like have a handful of full size candy bars at my front door for the for the brave kids who hike all the way up here. <laughs> you have come, okay. you can have a full size Hershey's bar. Uh, one of my other tips for weeding too is if you can like start in the opposite corner from whatever hand you are, right? So if you're right hand start in the top left corner and weed down, versus starting like in a bot, like, cause then your hand doesn't <laughs> stick to things as you go. And if I you're left handed- I've that before, but that's like totally smart. I think most people do it naturally, but I've seen people like start to weed things from like the bottom corner. And then they're, I mean, you get your arm hair stuck on that adhesive vinyl sticky back and you're like, ah, oh, I didn't need that arm hair. So my name isn't very big, so I'm going to kind of trim around it here. Yeah, that's what I. So what's the, what are the smallest scraps you save? Sometimes pretty small. Like I would definitely save this if it was a scrap. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, because I find like I use them a lot. I've got like a huge scrap box that. Yeah, I think I'm a hoarder sometimes. Like I need, I need more scrap ideas. So if you have scrap ideas, especially yes, for like Halloween or the holidays, go ahead and lay them. <laughs> Please let me know how you store your scraps because right now mine are chaos in a box, which is not, not a great. Mine are chaos in a drawer, so not either. Right. I also, yeah, I have, I have both because I have larger scraps in a drawer and smaller scraps in a box. <laughs> many methods over here. So here's what I cut. I cut this cute, I don't know if you can see it. It says which oh, cute. I liked. This one's, this bag's clearly for me. I'll make some, some different ones for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and there is just the name. I just, so I just cut a name. Cute. And I'm gonna lint roll again. Yeah, there's dog hair on here. I don't understand. Oh, I can see what you mean about that zipper because now you're we're pressing the back side. Yeah, so I'm on the back now. So I like kind of avoided the zipper when I did the back of mine. Yep. I'll put mine just a little bit. Are you putting yours at the top, in the middle, in the, at the I bottom? I think I'm going to put it towards the top, but under that zipper is what I'm thinking. That's, that was my plan, Angie. Yeah. I'm gonna use your finger trick here. <laughs> Pretty handy. Oops, of course my easy press turned off. There we go. Yeah, mine did too. I think it's about to get back up. <laughs> <laughs> but this will press one time, 10 seconds. So it's gonna be a quick one. I think I'm just gonna slide my easy press back and forth a little bit. I know they say not to do that, but you know. I do it. I do oh, what I want. So I cannot, seriously cannot do um, HTV with an iron. I have tried so many times. Yeah. It's just not. It's just not. For, <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, for a while before I had an easy press, I did. But then I was like, man, this is so hard. And 
Do you ever use your heat press for HTV or do you usually use your easy press? I do. Um, I use my heat press quite a bit, actually. It's just so easy. Um, the, the easy press is easier for like video. Um, but if I'm just like want to make something, a lot of times I just turn my heat press on mostly, I probably because like it's always out. Yes. That makes sense. I feel yeah, less. So I don't have to like get it out of the shelf, turn it on right. that type of thing. Yeah. I think I use my easy press more because my boys just come careening in here and the heat press sits on just like a little, um, like chest over there and there's just nothing around it saying I'm burning hot don't touch me <laughs> so it makes me nervous um, yeah I feel like my oh it would help if I hit the button to count down <laughs> for 10 seconds but you know I guess I'm pressing 15 this time <laughs> I've got a little bit here that didn't hear quite as well so my other trick is I'll be right back yeah um, I will use a piece of cotton fabric, in particular this piece, all the time. <laughs> and I will put it over what I've ironed. And then I'll press it again just to give it like a another press. Oh, awesome. Um, and a lot of times, if you're using something that's um, like way more textured, like if you're putting HTV on like a quilted pot holder or something like that, I will do the same. I'll like carefully peel it off and you know it doesn't hasn't gotten into the quilting very well and then I'll press I'll put a piece of cotton over it. I'll press it and once it's cool enough to touch then I'll just kind of like press it down into the like quilting and even on things like canvas it kind of works too like once you once it's cooled enough to touch it so you're not burning your hands off then I kind of press all over it and I feel like that I do the it. same thing. Um, I find it works with wood really well. Yes exactly. Even like um, taking like a scraper like you would for regular vinyl and like going yeah. over yeah. or when you do HTV on wood makes it yeah. actually like stick in all those yes, little like the bitty like <laughs> yeah because it's not it's yeah. actually not smooth so you need it to stick in all those little bitty ridges right yep all right how's this look which they were cute and I put is mine nice backwards I didn't reverse the video oh See, it was right when I started. Did I, I must have messed it up. Let's oh, see. That's okay. Who knows? <laughs> I promise this reads okay. Both of our bags read okay to us. Yes, <laughs> like Yours looks good. Oh, what font did you use? That's cute. It was called, I'm going to, someone's going to ask, so I'm just going to look right now. Mine is not a font. Totally right. <laughs> it's an image. I'll have Angie leave the uh, Cricut Design space number for the width file. <laughs> so let's layers. I'm trying to figure out. DTC Barn Acre. And it is a cricket font. Oh, I have that thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. It also it's also not a cricket font because DTC stands for Dixie Type Company and they have fonts and things on font bundles and other companies. Looky there. So if you don't have access, look for DTC Barn Acre like on font bundles and then you can use it even if you don't have access. Yeah, that's cute. All right. Okay, so I think that's it. I think that wraps it up. Um, but we want to know if you're joining us on November 18th. <laughs> yes. so first of all, <laughs> tell us in the comment section below if you've already signed up and you're already joining us. If you haven't, You'll have all the links below to sign up, get your bundle, make those mugs. Next time we'll be adhesive vinyl. We'll do layering, probably make several different mugs, um, tips and tricks on adhesive vinyl layering. I don't know. Anything else, Corey? Uh, I don't know. I feel like we'll just see how it goes. I'm really, in, I had a fun time today. So this was <laughs> a good time. And I just enjoyed crafting with everybody. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the comments when we uh, actually air this live premiere. Yes, absolutely. All right. So if even if you're watching the replay, give us a thumbs up. So if you're live or watching the replay, thumbs up always helps. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to drop Corey's YouTube channel in the description below, head there, subscribe. I'll also drop her social media link. If you don't follow her on social, you'll definitely want to, especially if you love your cricket machine. All right. Yes. So thank you so much for joining <laughs> us today. And we hope to see you on November 18th on Corey's YouTube channel. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>